and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In this video, it's all about acetate. So grab your stash of acetate. I've got what, 8 to 12 cards to show you. Hopefully some new techniques, maybe some reminders. I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. For this first project, I'm just going to create a card front made entirely out of acetate. I'm using Stampin' Up's window sheets, but any of your thicker acetate would work well. And if I were to adjust, first off, this is a card base where I love the interior and want to have it show through through the top. So I've cut it a little bit long. In this case, I've got a six by four and a half finish, so I gave myself half an inch because I've got another embellishment that I can use to sandwich my acetate. So again, just a plain piece of acetate would be really pretty sandwiched in there. But you know what? I've got some wind going on and so I'm going to dry emboss my acetate using this embossing folder and this is wind and waves. And so when I sandwich this, well first off I want to cut it to size so six and a half or six by four and just short because I don't want my acetate sticking off the top. So once I do that I want to position it into this embossing folder. But you know what? Something else. I have something, uh, a diffuser from Jim Holtz. Jim Holtz makes a collection of these. Don't worry if you don't have them. We're going to talk about something else. But why not? I've got this really busy wind and waves. Why not leave this clear or not dry embossed and run it through my Big Shot? And all I mean by that... So I've got my acetate in my folder. I've got one of my cutting pads down at the base. I've got the same setting for any embossing folder because I've got really thick acetate. If you're having trouble because you have a thin acetate, just put a couple more layers and crank that through. So I know I want to position somewhere in this way. You know what? I've got another one of these pieces that I can just do this. And all I'm doing is creating pressure everywhere except where I want that opening. So let me run that through my big shot. So Not pretty quickly, back. I've got the front of my card being this piece of acetate, and so that's going to work. I'm going to attach it to here. Now, from here on out, whenever I'm attaching acetate, I'm trying not to use liquid glue because it does kind of squish. It does kind of smear. I've got some snail adhesive. Worst case, uh, double-sided adhesive tape would work well. Anyway, get that on there, go ahead and secure it, and I'll This is my finished first project, and pretty quickly you have a finished card. Now a couple things, anything because this top is clear, anything that you've got on the front is going to show through when it's opened. So the first thing, there are impressions in this embossing folder, and so I just added a couple of gold stickers to kind of go with this really bright gold uh, embellishment. And then, the other thing is, of course, everything's going to show through from the back as well. And so if you want to add a salutation or allow a place to put your name, um, you need to put something on front. And so all I've got here is a couple die cuts, a little bow, and then on the inside, just made sure I use some zots in this case, but your mini glue dots would work as well. So anyway, just really quick stamping. Of course, I'm always going to do something on the back also. Now, don't have diffuser plates. Not to worry. There's so many embossing folders that kind of come with the center already done for you. So I've made a second project, and here it is. I used um, actually heat-resistant acetate for this one. Oh, I'm trying to feel the thickness. Maybe actually even a cheaper, so pretty thin acetate. Here's my embossing folder, and everything just looks prettier under acetate. Now when I attach this one, I put a strip border, because there's really not much that I can glue down behind here and not have it seen. The other thing I've done is you can color acetate. Um, I think alcohol-based markers would work, but you know what works better? Sharpie markers. So I've just very carefully, over the top of this embossed butterfly, sharpie marker so it showed up. Notice also that I am putting all this on solid cardstock. Uh, embossed acetate, unless you do something to the acetate, really doesn't show well on busy patterned papers. And finish the inside of that one also, and the back. And I've got the last card because maybe you don't have one of these either. You have an all over embossed So here's folder. this finished piece. It's a, I cut it a little bit short 
So I've got this brick embossing folder. This is a 6x6 from Stampin' Up! And I used my thinnest piece of acetate. And I talked about not using liquid glue. Well, when it works, because it is going to show through. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. And all this is, is a full piece of acetate. And then I cut a window. Created a frame, made a silhouette, out of the tree. This was really simple and easy to do. But a striking card. I don't think I've done the inside of that. I have stamped the back. Anyway, and all these, um, not to do with acetate, but if you're going to use your embossing folder, and I may have talked about this before, but why not emboss your envelopes? So let's see, I've made a couple. Uh, this one goes with this, using the same embossing folder for just the flap, because the way your Big Shot is situated, or your uh, die cutting machine, you may have to just go a certain length. We'll cover it up with some pattern paper. So I've got clouds go along with my wind, my second envelope. Those corners are kind of persnickety. I made my own, and so I'm going to open it this way. And so I did that image. And lastly, you don't have to make your own envelopes. Just take this top flap, this is a Stampin' Up! envelope, and go like this. Anyway, we're going to put away our embossing folders. I'm going to leave pictures of all these finished projects. And then we're going to just talk about uh, embellishments for the most part. So just plain and then kind of more about what you can stick on and stick off of your, or stick behind your acetate. At this point, I just want to talk to some of these finished projects. So I've got several here. And of course, the first thing is anything that would typ typically be under glass. Uh, you can put under glass with a piece of acetate. And so this is my terrarium. This was actually a snow, a snow globe die cut. And then these are chickadee die cuts, all from Paper Wishes, with some, I believe this is uh, Nature's Watercolor pattern papers. So did that course this, you've got windows, you've got doors, and here I want to talk about anything under acetate just looks better. So if you like to color in, maybe you don't want to color in everything, this is a uh, black and white uh, sketch that I got off the internet, and I placed that under a piece of acetate just where I colored, and on the inside, just kind of increased all that so I could write a salutation. So, enlarged it, changed the color to kind of coordinate with this card. But I don't know if you could see it, but I've got a little bit of um, Perfect Pearls silver mixed in with my inks to create that. So that's interesting. And of course, if you've got your Hunky Dory, um, the gilding is so pretty. Actually, let me separate the envelope. And it's so bright. You know what? Acetate, and this is printed acetate. I only buy printed acetate if it's on sale because I can print my own acetate. But I've used several pieces here and on the inside. And then I got on sale coordinating with this hunky dory card. So everything under acetate looks really good. So along those same lines, let me introduce, well, let me leave you a couple of photos of these three. Okay, in these two, I've got a, a split base. So I've got a single sheet of acetate for my card front. I've layered it in between a stamped torn piece and then my back card. So just kind of extended it off and gave it a tear. But what we're looking at is if you like to make uh, multimedia panels, acetate's a great way to show that off. The other thing is stacking acetate and that's what we're going to look at next so a little bit of both so really pretty panels that you want to show through to the front of your card and also these stacks of acetate in this case these are stamped and these are the feather framelits from stamping up and i think these inks come from paper wishes and they are the, done with uh, the ken oliver color bursts so really pretty and this one, these were um, framelits, like I said, from Stamping Up. And this one, this is just a stamp in Stazon. Um, you can barely see the layers, but actually it's been stamped on the base piece of acetate. And then I cut out um, the full sun piece. 
So you've got kind of that sticking up over these swirls. And then just the circle. And then on the inside, again, kind of the same multimedia background. Okay, so when I saw that, and I saw this, because you can see that silver. I don't know if you can see it flashing up. And I saw this piece with the gold also flashing up through the acetate. I thought, what a fun way to use some of your uh, specialty cardstock. So let me get set up for this, and we're going to look at this with stacking of acetate. In this project, I'm using the first thing you're going to notice is the colored acetate. And that comes from Paper Wishes because I already know that my stars, my holographic stars, are going to show through. So I've used a balloon framelit from Stamping Up along with the companion stamp set, Celebrate Today, to kind of ink these. And first off, I stamped right onto the holographic. I did want to share, I've been using Stays On this whole time and probably will continue to, stay, to use Stays On. But if you have an archival black stamping pad, and this one comes from Stamping Up, other people manufacture it. You know what? If you wait, and I've got a piece here. This is it. So if you've got time, I actually tested it as time went on. Let me see. Yeah, this is the top side. Um, actually, overnight, if you can wait overnight, I don't know how many hours, but I think this was one hour, two hours, three hours. And finally, you get something that will stick. So if you've got time, you can use that. I like using the archival black because the stamp pad is larger, the surface area of the stamp pad is larger than stays on, and the ink and the stamp pad itself are cheaper. The other thing you're going to need if you're stacking acetate is some clear uh, foam squares. So this is Cool Tack. I got this from Paper Wishes also, and it peels off the back, and then you've got a clear acrylic. The other thing to keep in mind is that as you're stacking, you kind of want to position these squares one on top of the so other. So I've already got my first set. And this is similar to these feathers. And this one I stacked on top of another piece of acetate. This one I'm going right on the holographic. But I did stamp the image first onto the holographic, stack this first layer. So as you're building the layers, you want to do that consistently. So even though I'm going to have three here, and two here, and one here, when I build this next layer, I'm going to be careful to actually position the happy right on top of each other more so and then this little tick down here or even the circle and then I'm going to put another birthday and then I'm going to stack this one up one more and put birthday so that's the way that's going to roll I've got a couple more embellishments to add and then we're going to come back with the finished card okay this turned out really unique and if I lift it you can actually see three dimensions in here, and I almost call it a 3D project. Anyway, really pretty. Of course, if I'm going to cut these out, I'm going to do it a little bit smartly. And so that made up my interior. These salutations come from Paper Wishes. It's the birthday greetings set, and so that's what I used for this card. Now, these little clear squares are somewhat specialty. You know what? If you've got a... Uh, specialty cardstock or paper um, just a single layer and all I've used here to back them up is actually I cut I use my circle framelits to cut circles out of my transfer adhesive sheet but you have Sizzix adhesive sheet they're little dots I'm gonna try and catch them but anyway this one's a little more for an older person so the more candles the bigger the wish Anyway, two really pretty cards. And I've got one more uh, focal to show you. Okay, and this is more of the lines of this card. So I've got a single stamp, and here it is. And you can see where there are things in the background, and then there are things coming up a little bit, and then things in the foreground. So why not use that? And I'm going to show you pictures of this process to create another 3D. I did use my uh, Sharpie markers to kind of color in back behind the acetate and of course the more layers you've got the darker that image is going to be. I think you'd be surprised because I've actually got some purples in here. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to leave you sections of this. I actually built that for my upcoming, actually this is coming next, so it's a 3D mail flat project. So this is going to sit right into this card front and it's going to look similar to this, so always fun. 
and then when you mail it, it will actually mail fly. So, we're going to take a look at that next. Anyway, I hope you took something uh, to do with your acetate. So, either some um, designs and techniques that remind you of different things that you've done in the past, and hopefully something a little bit new. Thank you for watching.